Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about comparing closing costs with a condo versus a co-op because I'm trying to buy an apartment in New York City as a first time home buyer. That's my dog. And what I also wanted to do was compare the closing costs to what it'd be like if you were going to rent an apartment and move in as like a new tenant. So if you're like, what is this girl even talking about? Let me like give you the spark notes. So my name is Joy. I am a Southern California transplant and I've been living in New York City for almost three years now. And a few days ago, I got my rent renewal and it went up 50%. Um, it was really cute. So the last few videos have been documenting my series on what like I was thinking about doing next. I kind of was thinking about leaving New York or getting a new apartment or whatever. And I kind of came up with this idea that I should just buy an apartment. So we're kind of at the steps right now where I'm trying to find what to buy. The last video I talked about getting pre-approved. So if you want to pause this and then click over there, I will put all the videos in the series. And if you want to come along with the journey, then subscribe. So I have been thinking about which apartment would make the most sense for me. Keep this in mind when I'm talking about this. Everyone's different and it's like whatever works for you, okay? So I'm probably gonna be in New York for a couple more years. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere. So it kind of just makes more sense for me to invest in a property than continuously renting and then getting painful anxiety and like, concern when my yearly lease has to be renewed and whatnot. So I decided I wanted to rent. Now there's two different scenarios of what you could buy that are most common. Either you're going to buy a condo or you're going to buy a co-op. And then the other ones are like townhouses and mansions, which we're not there yet. So make sure you subscribe so we can get there soon. Anyways, so I originally was going to do a condo because a lot of people online are like, don't do a co-op. And the reason why is because let's talk about co-ops. So co-ops are basically shares that you have in a building. You want to think about like the building is a stock. Let's say you're buying Tesla. And in Tesla as a whole, this co-op building, there's maybe 10 units that people can buy in that apartment. There's 10 apartments in there. You're basically owning one tenth of that company that Tesla is like the building. That's how my parents have explained it to me. So that is the first option. Now the downfall with having a co-op is it's kind of like joining a club, a, a exclusive community, a Soho house, so to speak. Basically, in order to get into the co-op, you have to be approved and every co-op building is different on how their rules are, how exclusive they try to be. I don't know. I've never, I haven't gone there yet. So all I know is that the board of the co-op has to approve you. There's going to be an interview and then there's like other fees that come with moving into a co-op, like move-in fees, application fees, the co-op fees. The pros of having a co-op is that co-ops are usually more affordable um, by like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars than a condo, and I can only afford that. So that's kind of like where I'm at. Also, with co-ops, is you don't have to pay the property tax because the property tax is already included in the HOA and the HOA kind of like takes care of everything for you. And also like the co-op just kind of like makes everything like make sure that it's like groomed and stuff, right? Now the thing with co-ops is you cannot rent out your apartment for usually like one or two years. Again, every co-op is going to be different based on what their rules are. Sometimes you can get around it for a year. You can definitely not Airbnb that shit. So if that was your whole plan, which was to Airbnb it, I don't think this would work. Um, I personally don't want to be an Airbnb host. And if I was going to be an Airbnb host, it would not be in New York because New York City and Airbnb, they just don't, they don't like each other. So just don't do it here. It's like, it's like, shh, don't talk about it. Um, okay. So then the other thing, yeah, the main thing was like, people were saying like, oh, you can't rent out the apartment. Cause like the whole thing with this is like, I'm going to have a 30 year fixed mortgage. So I'm probably not going to live in a tiny apartment my entire life. Like I'm hoping to get a ring on my finger and like move into a high rise brownstone. I don't know, not be in it forever. Okay. So 
there's that. Um, yeah, so, but the thing is, is that I have a lot of friends that live in New York City and they live in co-ops. I know a lot of people that rent out of co-ops and they love it because they sign two-year leases and they think they're getting a deal by being in that apartment for two years. So it's not impossible to get someone to rent. And if anything, it just means you're getting a more qualified tenant because if that tenant is going to be passing the board examinations, then they're most likely a legit tenant. And I don't really want to be a landlord that's going to have a lot of issues when I'm married, you know, so to me, it works. Now with condos, you own the condo, right? You don't have to go through the board. They're not controlling like any approval process because when you have a co-op, let's say you want to install a washer and dryer you have to fill out a form to get that approved. And depending on like how old school, I'm not gonna say the name, old school and stuffy your co-op is, they might even manage like how you paint the walls and that sort of thing. But I don't wanna, I don't wanna quote it, but I think most of New York, like 90% of New York is co-op. So that's just how it works in New York. If you are not from this city and you don't get it, I don't get it either, but that's just how it is. Now, let's talk about condos. So I was gonna get a condo until I realized what the closing cost was. It's like a Birkin, it's pretty expensive. So I'm gonna share my screen right now so you guys can see this. But I went to this website, preview.com, this is not sponsored, and it will give you an estimate of what closing costs are if you are looking at a co-op or a condo. So let's start off with co-ops because I've been talking about co-ops. Let's say you wanna buy a co-op for half a million dollars and you're gonna put a down payment of 20,000 because most co-ops want you to put 20% down. So if you put 20% down, let's say it's a co-op, I'm gonna say it's not a new development because I love pre-war. Um, you are looking at anything from $9,500. Notice how it's not a mansion tax included on there. Mansion tax is if your property is more than a million dollars, you get taxed on it but I heard that typically the seller like passes that mansion tax or whatever. Attorney fees are standard. Um, not really sure what bank attorney is. That's something I have to figure out. And then the other closing costs that come with it, like application fees and that sort of thing. Now, sometimes co-ops have certain fees, but I hear that usually the listing agent will transfer those. We'll come back to that. now. Let's say that I decided I was going to get a condo. Um, most condos are not going for 500,000. Most of them are going with like a 650. Let's say I put 20% down, that's $130,000 and I'm doing a condo. Most of them are new development. So if it's new development, we're looking at a whopping $38,000 pretty high like title insurance why why do we have title insurance someone explain to me like how the world works because what is a mortgage re recording tax why is it 10 grand and all these N nyc state transfer taxes there's a new york transfer tax state tax of two thousand six hundred dollars and then there's a new york city transfer tax so you're getting taxed by the state then you're getting tra taxed by the city and then you have a mortgage recording tax. What is that? Um, not really sure what that is. Let's see what happens if I say it's not a new development. So if it's not a new development, then it's gonna be anything like 22,000. I think anything new development has to be like within the last three years. Don't quote me on that. So, stop this. Now that we've seen that life is really expensive and unfair, I want to like throw it around and look at the other side of the table. So let's say you're like, wow, Joy, this is not an option for me. Um, it's not a lot of an option for a lot of people. So know that you are not unique and special in your own way. You're very much normal. Um, most people are like, okay, then I'm just going to rent. So let's say you rent an apartment. The average apartment right now is going for $3,000, right? $3,000 a month 
for either a really nice studio or a really crappy one bedroom. So let's say 3000 If you are going to rent an apartment for 3000 then for the year you are looking at $36,000 that you're going to be paying your landlord that you're never going to get back with equity. Okay. And your landlord is most likely going to tell you that you owe them first and last month's rent. So 3000 plus 3000 is going to be 6000 And then we have to add on the 15% broker's fee because I'm going to shoot high. Sometimes it's 12 to 15%, but we're going to assume that it is 15%. So, you know, we can guess for the worst. So that's going to be $5,400 plus 6,000, you are looking at just moving into your first apartment of New York, whether it's crappy or small, $11,400. So what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is New York's really expensive. No, but really, it's really expensive. We all know that. But now looking at it from moving costs, like it actually kind of does make sense to buy a co-op if you have the down payment. And that's where I'm moving forward with. If you guys made it to the end of this video and you liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna subscribe and join the journey, make sure you subscribe below and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.